Good morning. It's so great to see you all today, but I would like to ask a little grace this morning. As you can hear, I have a little something going on with my voice. I will do my best not to lose it, but I will try to just sing and do it like we're supposed to be doing it. But just a little grace, if you would, please. <clears throat> So in that vein, I would like to pray about your health this morning. So if you would please bow your head in prayer. With the colder temps, we are seeing resurgence of all sickness, COVID, the flu, sinus infections, least of all. We also have folks out there that have much bigger problems with their health and others that can rejoice in great health, of which we thank you for. With all this, we hope and we pray for your guidance and for your health and everything that you give to us. In our holy name we pray, amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Please stand as we sing. Now praise the hidden God of love.
behind you. All right. Joy to the world. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let us receive our King. Let every heart prepare and move. Heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing. I think we should pray for Kim. So make sure that's part of your prayer this morning. Pray for Kim, because I'm not reading the scripture. So come on, we got got to have somebody do that. And also, um, since I'm asking, please pray for the service today as well. Um, we're winging some things today, and so um, it's kind of by necessity, not design. And so grace abounds. Grace abounds, and depending on how this all goes, you'll either love it or you'll go, what was that? So, okay, <laughs> good luck. And um, we do invite you during this time as other prayer requests and concerns come to your mind, please give those to God. We're going to give you a time of silent prayer, and then we'll lead you toward the Lord's Prayer. And no, no garden of prayer today. We have a little too much stuff up here today, and we're going to ask you to come up in a while anyway. So... Um, just pray from the pew, and your prayer is good. We all know, no matter where you are, uh, God hears you. And so let's have a time of silent prayer, and then I'll lead you to the Lord's Prayer. Dear Lord, we come to you today. We do thank you for your gifts that you pour into our lives. Today, Lord, we give to you our concerns, our praises, our prayers, that you might hear us and reach out and help us. Much like the prophet Isaiah, we long that you might tear open the heavens and come to us. We know that often you do that very thing, and we miss it because it's not quite grand enough or big enough. And yet our small prayers are answered. Our needs are met. Our concerns, they're validated. So Lord, we thank you that you come to us in majestic and great ways, but also in the small and quiet way. It's in the quiet that we truly know your love for us. And so today we thank you for the gifts that you've poured into our lives 
and especially that greatest gift, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray that we remember his teachings and the love that he shared, how he truly did tear open heaven and reveal to us your love. So today, as the children of God, we come before you in the light of that love and pray the prayer that Jesus Christ himself taught us as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As the elders go back, or not the elders, I'm sorry, the deacons, um, go back and prepare to take the offering, I want to kind of walk through of what in the world is about to happen here. And so if you'll just hang in there with me, that way we can just um, do it all without announcements every 35 seconds or something like that. So we're going to take the offering. And then as the uh, deacons go to the back, uh, you'll see people moving. The youth group's going to move during that time. They're going to come up here to the Chris Montree. Uh, Denise is going to come up here and join me and put gloves on and all kinds of good stuff. And then um, I'm going to say the words of institution here at the communion table. And then we will invite you all to come forward and partake of the communion here at the table. So we're going to invite the back rows first to come, because last time we remember when we did the front rows, everybody was trapped in the back. So if the back rows will come first, and then if you want, after you partake of communion right over here, We'll invite you, if you want, you can come up and the youth group will be hanging Chrismons and you can hang a Chrismon with them, okay? Or they'll give you a Chrismon or they'll, they'll tell you to go away. I don't know what they're going to do, but it's their, it's their game up there. And so we invite you to do that as well, all right? And then after that, you can go back to your seat and say, praise the Lord, let's move on, okay? So may the offering be given and received. Today we come to the table and we want to celebrate our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are mindful of the pall that was placed over at Jesus' death. But here at the table, we are reminded that the pall was removed, the body was raised, and that we have hope, hope of life with Jesus Christ eternal. We remember it most clearly in the words of Jesus Christ himself at that last table. It was on that last night that Jesus took bread, and after he blessed it and broke it, he said, take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. In a similar manner, after the meal was over, Jesus took a cup, and he said, this cup is a new covenant. It will be sealed with my blood. Take, drink. And so we come to the table to eat of the bread, to drink of the cup, and to proclaim the saving grace of our Lord and Savior until he comes again. This is a gift from God to the people of God. And the people say, Amen. Amen. Let's stand and sing.
You may be seated except the back row. We invite the back row to come forward. Christ, Rodney. There you go. Christ. 
I'll slow down. Body of Christ. Who have we not got? No Richard and Annette. Anybody else or did everybody else come up? Okay, we're going back.
Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come to your table. Lord, we remember the sacrifice and the service of your son. Help us to follow his example to our best of our ability. And we thank you for how you feed us, not only at this table, but in all our life. And it's in Jesus' name we pray, and everybody says, Amen. Amen. All right. Do we have some kids? The fun continues. a good group today oh hey hey I didn't do it oh no she's looking at me like I did it <laughs> I'm okay I'm so sorry ow yeah yeah you're a kid it's okay Aww. here you want to hold my book you want to hold my book no oh I'm sorry oh such such a mean pastor I is oh well, golly, after that, I have to say, rejoice. <laughs> rejoice. Emmanuel shall come to us today. And so Jacob has said he's going to read this next piece for us, okay? And then we'll talk about the candle, all right? All right, here we go. So, Jacob, it's, it's, it's all that. Okay. Okay, good luck. All right, sorry. Oh, wait, I better let you here. The darkness has long been upon us. We long for the light, the fulfillment of God's promise of, of salvation. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. The light has not yet come. We wait and watch for the dawning of God's glory. This one candle casts its light into the darkness. It reminds us to stay awake and watchful. For the promised one will come to us at an unexpected hour. Light the first candle. Oh, light the first candle. You're not supposed to read the italics part. There's supposed to be some mystery around this. Like, how do we know to light the first candle? So, today, we're lighting a candle for love. Do you see our love banner up there? And so, today, no, you're not today. And so, um, today, we're going to light the love candle. And if you notice, our Advent wreath is kind of naked. Do you see it up here? Where are the candles? Where are all the candles? Yeah, they're hiding under there. And so we're going to put them up one at a time because today we're talking about one light in the darkness. And so if you were to guess, please get this right. If you were to guess, what do you think the one light of the world is? Okay, love's a good guess. Yes. Well, what about a guy? One light. One guy, one light. He is a happy guy, I think. I agree. God, God, keep trying. Did I hear Jesus over here? Hey, Jeff, what about you guys? You think Jesus is the one light? So how do you think Jesus is the one light in a dark world? How do you think that happens? What do you think? Let me try, Okay. The, the world was filled with darkness that you can also call sin. And Jesus came to show us that we can overcome the darkness by accepting him and his light. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, do you want to light the candle today? I do. Okay. No, no, she's lighting. So, Emma, after we light the candle, you do the mystery prayer that nobody knows is coming. Okay? What? So you're next. <laughs> well, if you can't write it, then Jacob will read it. I'm sorry. Write it, read it. Okay. Do you know how to do it? You press that. 
Okay. Push the button. Push here. I'll help you. This button. For the light of your presence, holy God, guide us from the night of our hopeless and lead us with joy toward the dawning of your new day. Amen. Good prayer. All right. Well, thank you guys for coming. And I think, looks like Miss Renee's back there, if I see right. And so you guys can go with Miss Renee. Thanks for coming. Cease to worship 
This morning is Isaiah 64, 1 through 9. My apologies for dropping the papers. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the, mem the mountains would tremble before you. But you will go hungry, my servants will drink. But you will go thirsty, my servants will rejoice. But you will be put to shame. My servants will sing out of the joy of their hearts. But you will cry out from anguish of heart and wail in brokenness of spirit. You will leave your name to chosen ones as the curse. The sovereign Lord will put you to death. But to servants he will give another name. Whoever invokes a blessing in this land will do so by the God of truth. He who takes an oath in the land will swear by the God of truth. But the past troubles will be forgotten and hidden from my eyes. So ends the reading of his Lord. Well, luckily, we've done a lot already today, so I get to do a short sermon. That's kind of nice, isn't it? Um, today we're in Isaiah 64, and, and he starts the passage right out with that he longs for God to tear open the heavens. And I think maybe what we should talk about a little bit is a little history lesson so that we understand that we don't know for sure what Isaiah is saying. If you hear near the end of what Isaiah is saying, he's talking about ease your anger, let go of your wrath, forgive your people. Uh, that's language that sounds like God at one point in the not very far past was angry and angry with his people and that he had turned and hid his face from all and I don't know, maybe he tore his cloak. So Isaiah using the imagery of tearing open the heavens would be just right pop in the eyes of everybody reading or hearing this scripture in a Jewish tradition. Tearing is a long associated tradition for the Jewish people when they experience great loss or great anger. Great loss, of course, is they reach and they tear. I'm not actually doing it, Teresa. I, I like this shirt. They, um, they reach and they actually tear about three inches of their garment, whatever they're wearing. They tear it across their heart to show the irreparable damage of the loss of someone they care about deeply. But they also have been known in moments of great anger when they're upset and frustrated, to again reach over and tear, to show just how angry they are and that that person causing them grief or whatever you might want to say is dead to them, dead. And so today Isaiah is talking about God tearing open the heavens and an honest assessment or an honest question is, how does he think God is tearing those heavens open? Because God has a great sadness and a great mourning and a great lament, and he wishes to tear out the old, to put to death the old, and to bring in the new so that his people 
can live in a world that does not have pain, suffering, that his people can live in a place where they can feel the love of God all the time? Or is God still angry and he wants to tear the heavens open so he can get at us who have sinned, who have fallen short, who have left his commands, who are following what we think is right rather than what God wants us to do. It makes you wonder a little bit, which way is God tearing open the heavens in Isaiah's mind? Well, we'll never know. We'll never know. But I have a thought for you all that I'd like to share with you. And it's a short story, so hang in there with me. Um, I finally gave in this year. I don't know if I have ever explained this to you all before in the past, but I absolutely despise putting up the Christmas tree. Like, despise it. Like, I think the Christmas tree should go up December 23rd. Late in the evening after I'm in bed. But, but this year, Teresa has convinced me, because she's the boss, that the Christmas tree, and we've had a rough year, so the Christmas tree is going up early. And so the Christmas tree went up basically on Thanksgiving Day. And she decorated, it was, it was awful. But you know, whatever she wants. Whatever she wants, I love her, I tolerate all these things. I'm just a, I'm a, just a great guy. So anyway, <laughs> so we put up the Christmas tree and, and so the lights are up and it just, it does, the ornaments are up and we have a lot of ornaments that, you know, are handmade and memory type things. And, and you look at some of the ornaments and you go, there's this one ornament and it says, you know, Scott and Teresa 1990 and you're just going, oh my gosh, we're so old. But then you look at some and it makes you feel even older, like Megan did an ornament and decorated it all up for like her fifth grade class and it was like 2003. And you're going, ugh, 20 years ago, are you kidding me? And so that's kind of what we did. And it, it was nice, okay, it was nice. So the tree is looking good, the lights are up, we're eating turkey, it's totally dysfunctional. But um, Rachel then decides that if we have the tree up with the lights on, we need presents under the tree. And lo and behold, she's really advanced this year. She has already gone on Amazon or whatever, and she's bought everybody's present. So she goes in her room, she wraps them all up, wraps them all up, she comes out and sticks them under the tree. And then we have dessert, which you know is my favorite part of, of the Thanksgiving meal. We have dessert. And so after, after that, you know, you're tired. You want to take a nap, of course, and you can't because there's a whole bunch of grandkids in the house. So Hunter, not Hunter, I'm about through Hunter under the bus there. Carson and I, we're playing in the front room. That's what we do. And so Carson, at one point, he looks under the tree and he goes, oh, presents. And you know, I'm stupid. And so I go, hey, let's look at them and see who the present's for. And, all, you know, we could organize it. You know, this, is, this kid's not dumb. And so I'm looking at him. Well, this is for Grandpa, and this is for Grandma, and here's, here's one for Rachel, and here's one for, not Rachel. That would be kind of silly, giving yourself a gift. Here's one for Zach, and here's Emma, and here's Hunter. And, oh, looky here, Carson. It's a gift for you. Of course, oh, he's so happy. He's so happy. And then, you know, things happen. I, I went away from the room for a bit. I don't know exactly what I was doing. I maybe was going to get a soda or an extra cinnamon roll or it was something, but we were doing a puzzle when I left. And I get back to here, rip, and he has it open. It is torn open and it reveals his Christmas present. And I'm like, oh my goodness, if Rachel sees this, I'm a dead man walking. And so I'm like, no, no, you can't do this. I'm covering it back up. And, you know, I'm going, you never saw this. You don't know you're getting a car for Christmas. You just be quiet now. You will not know this. Just hush. Then Teresa comes around the corner. <laughs> With me holding a ripped open 
Christmas present for Carson, who's sitting there crying because I won't give it to him. And I think, well, one of us is dead. <laughs> so being the good grandparent that I am, I said, Carson did it! <laughs> Waiting for her wrath to direct in that, you know, area. And I even step over so she can get a cleaner shot at him, you know, to take him out. And she comes into the room and she grabs the package and she does that grandma thing. She says, it's all fine, baby. I'm going to tape it back. She didn't say baby. She didn't say baby. And so it's all fine. I'm going to tape it back up. Make it, Rachel will never know. It'll be just fine. You have to wait till Christmas, but then we're going to open it and you're going to like playing with it. It's all okay. You're not in trouble. You're not in trouble. And so it was beautiful. I mean, he wasn't even crying by the time she got done with him. And so when I hear Isaiah's passage about tearing open, that we long to tear open the gift, that, that I see God in love, watching us that maybe we have sinned and torn a little early, or maybe we have sinned and walked out of the room and let others tear early, or I don't know, but maybe we've all fallen short and we should fear when God tears open the heavens. But I don't, because I see God's love overcoming everything, God's love will trump whatever mistakes we've made. And the gift that we will tear open is eternal life with God in heaven and our friends and our family, those that have gone on before us. That's a gift. Now, I can't wait to tear it open, but I know I have to wait. I know I have to wait. So today, I encourage you all simply with this. Do not fear the coming of Jesus Christ. Do not fear the coming of God tearing open the heavens to reveal all. Don't fear. None of us are perfect. We've all made mistakes. But we do know this. We do know this. God's love will save us all. So God bless you all. Hang on to that. And don't open your Christmas presents early. Amen. We invite you during this time, if you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, to come down, and I'll be right here, and we can pray a prayer, and you can accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Or if you want to join the church, we invite you to come down, and again, we'll let you join our church during this time. But maybe you want to come down and just simply give something to God. We do that here, too, and so we invite you to come down and do that. Or you can be right where you are. Remember, God hears our prayer everywhere. Give what you need to God so that you can go out with a clean spirit and worship God and serve God. Let's stand and sing.
Why don't you guys be seated, because I'm going to surprise you later, too, so. There are shut-in gift bags on the credenza in the back. Um, please take them to the recipient and add something to them, uh, for example, some lotion or socks, candy, lip balm, something like that. Also, um, let the office know if you need a ride to the night of the winter, win one winter wonderland caroling night. Um, sign up if you are coming, and also if you're bringing an appetizer. It's uh, December 9th at 6 p.m. in Fellowship Hall. Night of lights, glitter, and fun. Come share with an appetizer, snack cookie, or other finger food. Um, the background will be available for pictures for families, individuals, and groups on Sunday. It is beautiful, and we'd like to make wonderful Christmas cards. Um, we also still have ornaments in the back to be decorated by your families. Um, for our night of caroling, one per family, and please put the year on the back. Well, that wasn't that bad. It's oh, good. More than usual. No, that's good. That's good. So today, as we go out, what I want to do is celebrate, and um, I want to celebrate a birthday. So Rodney is turned 53 today. Is that right, Rodney? Yeah. All right. And so we want to sing Happy Birthday, Rodney. I didn't warn you, Peggy. You got it? Okay. And so why don't we all sing happy birthday to Rodney? Okay, let's stand. Let's stand. Yeah, okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Rodney. Happy birthday to you. And Rodney, we're really happy. You keep walking up to us every week. You keep doing that, okay? That is awesome. And so today, I just want us to remember the reason for this season. It is a birthday that's a coming, but we gotta wait. We gotta wait. But the light's beginning to break in. The light's beginning to break in. So God bless you all today, this whole week. I hope to see you next week. And let's keep celebrating until Jesus' birth here in just a short time. God bless you all. Real good and amen.